This video will include descriptions of violence and images from inside one of Wisconsin's most brutal segregation units. Hi, my name is Ben. I'm a volunteer with Forum for Understanding Prisons, or FFUP. This is the first in a series of videos we're making to increase awareness about conditions and lives in Wisconsin prisons. This video is about Quan Barnett. He's a 19-year-old kid from Milwaukee who was severely beaten by Officer Russell Goldsmith and other staff at Columbia Correctional Institution at around 2 a.m. on October 26, 2018. This is not a video of that beating, but of a less violent cell extraction occurring the night before. It still shows what the inside of Wisconsin Segregation Unit looks and sounds like, how staff who are on their very best behavior act, and what their captives do to try and defend themselves. Good evening, my name, or good morning, my name is Lieutenant Cornelius. Today's date is 10-25-2018. The time is 12-27. Currently, we have inmate Bar Barnett Kwan, 650-427, in cell 42 at approximately 11.50 last night p.m. Uh, staff approached the cell to secure his trap. While staff were in progress to secure the trap, Mr. Burnett was able to push his trap open and spit water on two staff assaulting them. Uh, I contacted the ADO, Captain Chickenowitz, and he authorized the use of a cell entry team to remove Mr. Barnett from the cell. I also contacted the uh, on-call PSU doctor, Dr. Gambaro, and she authorized the removal of all his property from, from the unit. Uh, what's gonna happen is, is that we're gonna go down there <laughs> uh, give him a directive to comply. If he fails to comply, I'm authorized to use the X26 taser and a uh, Mark 9 streamer. All right. On pad one, we have Sergeant Kane. On pad two, None of these officers were involved in Quan's assault. It's currently under investigation, and the DOC wouldn't release video of it. So, what we're going to do instead is read witness accounts of that assault while showing this video. For example, according to Lewis Keyes, who is in one of these cells, after Quan spat water at Officer Goldsmith, assaulting him, as the lieutenant just said, Goldsmith told him, I'm going to rip your fucking heart out. Hey, turn your audio on. Turn the audio on that The voices you're hearing are mostly other prisoners yelling at staff to follow protocol and giving Quan tips for reducing the risk of attack during a cell extraction. Notice the narrow hallway and close quarters in this seg unit, the lack of sunlight. Imagine how stale the air must get in this concrete box. Some people have been held in these kinds of units in Wisconsin for years, even decades. The people held here seem familiar with this routine. They expect the COs to look for a pretext to assault Quan and are trying to deter them from doing so. Look at these five heavily armored guards awkwardly crowded into this narrow hallway. They've got a taser and pepper spray, and they're suited up like this all to deal with one 19-year-old kid. Can you imagine what it must feel like to be one of them? How humiliating and ridiculous the life of a guard must be? It's no wonder the DOC can't find or retain the staff. One of the voices advising Quan is Lewis Keyes, the guy who wrote us about the assault. He
He's older and more experienced, but he's also suffered greatly in Wisconsin prisons, spending long periods in isolation and on suicide wall. 42! Imagine how tense this situation is. You can't see it, but Quan is completely naked to show that he's not hiding any kind of weapon. Staff are going to wrap him in a security smock before bringing him out of the cell. Also, notice how inadequate this video is. If these guys did assault Quan and claim he made a false move, this video would be utterly useless to either verify or refute their claim. But they would nevertheless be believed over him. This is why other captives are stressing that the audio be on and that Quan talk loudly and continuously. <laughs> Cornelius pretty fair. Cornelius pretty fair. Just don't flinch at them CO's pencil arms, man. They're not pretty fair. Brother Gabriel, you're going to return care. Yeah. Comply with all orders. I am complying with all orders. I'm not going to resist. Comply with all orders. I'm not going to resist. Now they're going to take Quan up and put him in a restraint chair. In this instance, he's only going to spend just a few minutes in the chair, but after the assault the next day, he'll be placed in it again for much longer. We've heard of many cases where people are restrained in this chair or a bed for hours and hours. Holding someone immobile in a stress position like that for extended periods is an incredibly painful form of torture. Alright, you want to go down there and clean out the cell? While Quan's in the chair, guards are going to take all of the property out of his cell, then they'll put him back in and attach a metal trap box to his cell's cuff port or trap. This box is supposed to prevent Quan from being able to open the trap door and spit water at anyone. While they're doing that, I'm going to paraphrase and read excerpts from Louis Keyes' letter to describe what will happen with that trap box the next day. At some point during the day after this video was shot, Quan popped open the trap box and rather than calling the captain or closing the trap box, an officer named Woodruff called Russell Goldsmith, who Quan had spat on the day before. Goldsmith came over and laid a white bed sheet on Quan's open trap box. Lewis writes, Quan, young and naive, thought it would be funny to take the sheet and pull it into his cell, which was actually a setup. I told Quan, put that sheet back out your cell, they're setting you up for a cell extraction. But he told me he couldn't because the CEO had rushed down the tier and to close the trap box. So he put the sheet inside the trap box instead. Now I'm going to fast forward through about one minute of video here because I want to highlight something Lieutenant Cornelius will say to Quan. Mr. Burnett, I've been authorized by Dr. Gantar to remove all your property from your cell. And when you return back to the cell, you will be in there with no property whatsoever. You understand what I'm telling you? Okay, so staff are going to remove you from the restraint chair here. So, 
Because Quan spat water at guards, this lieutenant got uh, Dr. Gambaro to authorize putting him on observation, also known as suicide watch. It's not unusual for observation to be used as a punishment in prisons. Dr. Gambaro, the staff psychologist, has been named in other FFUP correspondence for authorizing mistreatment on behest of guard staff. We're going to return you back to the cell. But doctor's orders are that Quan might harm himself if he's allowed any property. As I was recounting, during the coming afternoon, staff members will not only put a sheet within his reach, but they'll also prevent him from putting it out of his cell once he regretted taking it. This is also not unusual. FFUP has received a lot of mail about guards giving people on suicide watch the means to self-harm, as well as harassing, mocking, and encouraging them to kill themselves. So, for these reasons, it's not surprising that in recent years, suicides in the DOC have spiked. Back to Quan. So after giving him the sheet, Goldsmith and a sergeant named Michael Thompson returned to Quan's cell door in the middle of the night about 24 hours after this video was shot. According to Lewis Keyes, after telling Woodruff to hit the lights, Goldsmith said to Quan, we're here to kill you. Lewis says Sergeant Thompson's body cam should have been on and recording this audio, but we were denied access to that footage, if it exists. According to Lewis, the plan was for them to claim that Quan had took the sheet and attempted suicide so that they would have a legit reason and way into his cell. But, to their surprise, he was standing in his cell with no sign of a sheet because he'd stuffed it in the trap box. But, as Lewis says, they were so desperate that they went into his cell regardless. The cell door opened, Goldsmith had a huge shield, and Thompson, who Lewis says is 387 pounds, was behind him. They rushed into Quan's cell and began to beat him, all while he was on clinical observation and in a smock. They picked up and slammed him into a metal bed frame with no mattress. This kid screamed and yelled and begged them to please stop. He's 5'7", 5'8", 145 pounds. Then Lieutenant Olson, Sergeant Reynolds, and Sergeant Sullivan all rushed into the cell and beat him, all while yelling, stop resisting, choking him to stop him from screaming. Then they put cuffs and leg irons on him. Officer Goldsmith dragged him out of his cell in a chokehold, and shook him viciously, like a pit bull, hard and fast. The CO had his tongue out and was making menacing faces to inmates who yelled and beat on the doors. Quan bled his face, eyes, head, and body beaten and bruised while he made desperate attempts to breathe. According to Wisconsin State Journal, Quan later told investigators that during the assault, Goldsmith also gouged his eyes and twisted his fingers, breaking them. Let's return to this video of the night before that assault again. Lieutenant Cornelius is about to speak with Quan. When uh, we remove the tether and we secure the trap, I want you to go to the back of the cell. All right, we need, to, we need to attach the trap box on it. So if you come toward the trap at all, I'm gonna deploy my X-26 taser. I'm telling you that right now, on camera. Yep, I'm just telling you, when, once you go back into your cell, and we're putting the trap box on, I want you to remain in the back of the cell, okay? All right. So to avoid being tased, Quan must follow directions exactly and keep maximum distance from the armor-wearing guards. Notice the red mark on Quan's arm from that strap being on him only about seven minutes. The next night, after being attacked and beaten, he was put back in this restraint chair. We don't know for how long, but while he was strapped in, Lewis says that CO Goldsmith went back into his cell, closed the cell door halfway, grabbed the sheet out of the trap box, tied it into a noose, and took it upstairs, where he began to ask Quan why he tried to kill himself. Later, at 8.30 or 9 that morning, they moved Quan off the block for treatment, and Lewis was able to see him again. He says, both his eyes were swollen shut, his head and face disfigured, fingers broken, body and feet bruised, and he couldn't stand or walk alone, or see. Him. 
After FFUP received Lewis's letter, we forwarded it to various officials in the DOC and filed an open records request. We're not privy to the internal communication, but it wasn't until two days after we filed that request that Goldsmith and Thompson were charged with any crimes. The officers' reports were very strange. They stated both that Quan had hung himself with the sheet and was unresponsive, and also that this unresponsive prisoner took a boxer stance when they entered the cell. Sergeant Thompson later admitted that these were lies. He still pled not guilty, though. He's facing trial for falsifying records, but not for the assault. Goldsmith was also charged with falsifying records and abuse of residents of penal facilities. This is a charge carrying fewer penalties than you or I would likely receive if we beat someone as badly as he beat Quan. Both are currently awaiting trial. Quan tells us he's doing his prison sentence by himself, with no friends or family support, and would really like a pen pal. In the summer of 2016, he was charged with four felonies and two misdemeanors, and pled guilty to armed robbery in a deal that dropped the other charges. Well, held on that, at Lincoln Hills, he caught new charges for assault, and on his 18th birthday, was moved to the adult system. We don't ask about or know the details of his backstory because regardless of his past, we know that beating and isolating someone in prison until he's released his community supervision in 2023 will do nothing to advance public safety. More likely the opposite. Lewis Keyes, who first told us about this incident, writes FFUP more often. Since informing us of Quan's assault, he's been transferred to Cattle Marine Correctional, then back to Columbia. He suffered targeted retaliation and lost much of his property, including legal work, which should be a constitutional violation. He's cut himself repeatedly and badly enough to require visits to the emergency room, blood transfusions, and iron pills. He says that to staff at Columbia, black inmates who self-harm and hurt themselves is only acting out and not at all due to mental illness. He max out his sentence and be released in less than six months. While this video was being edited, Lewis maxed out his sentence and was released on community supervision. He went straight from segregation in this unit to houselessness. His community supervision officer made him land in Fond du Lac, where he had no family connections and where FFUP was unable to help him find any assistance. Last we heard, after less than a week living hungry in a shelter, his community supervision officer told him he had to find a way to her office within 30 minutes or she'd revoke him and send him back to prison. We hope to tell more of Lewis's story in the future. The DOC has no treatment or transition plan for people like him. Instead, Dr. Gambaro and other staff made up a behavior modification plan which states that if Lewis self-harms or engages in attention-seeking behavior, he'll be put in the restraint chair for extended periods. So the DOC's response to mental health crises is torture. In this video, we've seen Lieutenant Cornelius and his staff following the rules enough to not warrant a DOC investigation Yet, some very disturbing things happen. We at FFUP also know that the assault Quan experienced is not an isolated incident. We received many accounts of abuse before and after last October. We've reported them to the DOC, posted them on our website, and done records requests to gain access to details and confirmation. For example, a future video here will be about another violent assault at Columbia Correctional occurring in February. So neither the felony charges Goldsmith and Thompson face for beating Kwan, nor the increased oversight that the new DOC secretary and administration assure us they're exerting have been enough to change the culture of violence and abuse that seems pervasive in Wisconsin prisons. Time is uh, 1243. Mr. Barnett complied with staff directives, came out of the cell, force was not used at all. He was placed in a restraint chair while staff went back to the cell or moved uh, property items that he still had remaining in his cell. FFUP and a group of prisoners held on solitary confinement for years or decades have written a lawsuit against this practice. Outside representation and support is vital to that lawsuit's success, though. We've also supported hunger strikers and advocated for the abolition of solitary confinement for more than 15 days in Wisconsin prisons. 
This is a policy change that Governor Evers or Secretary Carr could make today. If you would like to help FFUP conduct this kind of research and advocate for people held in Wisconsin prisons, please donate to the fundraiser at gofundme.com slash prison forum or contact our founder, Peg Swan, at pgswan3 at aol.com or me at insurgent.ben at gmail.com. Thank you. Please share this video, like, and subscribe to our channel.